All right. Good morning. My name is Jim McLennan, and uh, thanks to the folks at IdeaGen TV for giving me a chance to talk to you today. I want to talk about sustainability or how a, how a business becomes uh, sustainable. But before I go there, I'd actually like to talk about the concept of buzzwords. You know, buzzwords are, are a, a necessary evil. I think some people think in, in society, uh, people overuse them, but I actually am a big fan. I think that a buzzword is uh, a, really a way to squeeze a lot of information in a very small package. And I can have a deeper conversation about a more complex topic uh, using buzzwords. So it really helps me express a fairly complex idea in a very small package. And that's really important because this presentation is full of buzzwords. Uh, starting off with digital transformation. You know, that's something that uh, I've been working on for a, a long time. And uh, digital transformation, if you uh, uh, do a little Google search, you can see that it's a relatively new buzzword. Over the past 10 years, it's really spiked up in popularity. A lot more searches are going on. And a lot of people talking about what it means to do a digital transformation or be a digital business. And I found that the easiest way to help that conversation is to have a really simple framework, a simple way to define what it means to be a digital business. It's five simple components. Uh, it's it's uh, the first three are things you would expect, systems and processes designed to automate internal operations, bring you closer to your customers, and even information become uh, becoming part of the products that you sell. It's really you know what you make, who you sell it to, and how you fulfill. That's pretty much business right there. The next important component is the data itself, and I'm not talking about pulling all this information together into a into a, a data bus or something. I'm saying, how do you, how does, how does your company get information out of that data and use it to make good business decisions? And finally, the, the, the one component that, that most folks don't expect, the, the last component of a great digital business is your team. The people inside of your organization that connect with your customers, that uh, manufacture and ship the products that you sell. It's an incredibly important piece of a digital business. And now that I have a simple framework for digital business, now we can start talking about all those specific initiatives that we want to uh, figure out how to make happen in our company. And it's easier to keep control of things and understand who's going to take ownership, how we're going to prioritize things because they plug in to this really simple framework. It's a powerful way to sort of distill a, 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 a tough to deal with um, uh, idea like digital transformation. And it really helps. So, yeah, digital transformation is a buzzword, but basically it's really gets to talking about how, what is the, how, how is your business uh, applying technology and applying digital ideas to drive your ideas forward, to create the value that you want to create. And actually what it does in a certain way is it helps make life predictable. Uh, it helps make your company resilient, but that's funny, this idea of predictability. So let's go back to the Google Trends, and we'll talk about something that we're all very aware of, COVID. You know, I, I, I went to the exact same graph, and I added a couple more uh, terms. And COVID, nobody was even talking about this. This picture is from December 31st of 2019. Nobody was talking about COVID back then. Now, for some reason, people were, people were talking about Spanish flu. Hmm, that's interesting. Did we actually see COVID coming? Well, actually, no. That big spike around twenty was it twenty twelve? That's actually a, a, a episode of Downton Abbey where Spanish flu goes to the Abbey and everybody starts to get sick. And people were going out to the web and trying to Google and find out what the story was. And that other big spike uh, later on around twenty fifteen, hmm, maybe that was something. No, that's actually when uh, that episode of Downton Abbey. Uh, premiered in Italy and China. So it was their turn to go to Google and find out what everybody was talking about. So it was just a piece of pop culture back then. <clears throat> but let's go forward a little bit, just two weeks. The 15th of January in 2020, let's take the same snapshot. Something's happening. COVID's still uh, not even on the radar screen, but Spanish flu took a really big jump, and that's not the latest Downton Abbey movie. That was something else. And two weeks later, at the beginning of February, COVID had finally hit the radar screen in terms of Google searches, and it was starting to dwarf everything. And just a few weeks after that, on March 17th, uh, digital transformation in Spanish flu was nowhere to be seen. 
And that date is actually very significant to me. I remember that date because that was the day that all the restaurants shut down and all the businesses shut down in Chicago, really everywhere. And everybody had to uh, work from home. It was a significant, significant event. And a lot of companies were trying to make a sense out of this thing that was the world had become completely unpredictable. And so a lot of us went to another uh, buzzword to try to make sense of it all. We went to innovation. And yeah, innovation is a buzzword, but really innovation was the key. Innovation was the key to, to find ways to apply digital technology for companies to be able to uh, uh, react better and become resilient and understand how to, to deal with this big change of what was going on. And it also allowed us to, to uh, become more innovative. And, and uh, but my point on this slide is what a lot of companies talk to me about is my company, my, my business is not innovative. I don't know how to do that. It's just not in our culture. And I can't figure out how to do it. But there is way. There is a way to engineer innovation inside of an organization. It's really five simple components. The first one is um, you have to have an environment that allows for innovation. And I'm really talking about yeah, the ability to collaborate, but you got to invest in some tools. You got to invest in some technology that people can apply. But just buying a little bit of software is not going to solve the problem. The next two pieces you have to have are creativity. And a curiosity, curiosity about what do these new technologies do? I'm going to invest some of my own time to learn about these different digital things. So then I can use my creativity to understand if I understand the, the tools, I understand my problem space, I'm going to come up with some creative ways to apply that. But even that's not enough because this is not a, a, a task to you know, try to set up a big play playground where everybody can play with the tools. There has to be a, a critical challenge that, that we're trying to fix. Now, this could be a problem to solve, or it could be an opportunity to realize, but it has to be something specific. And you have to have a focus on the results. You know, innovation is not taking months and months and months to play around with something. No, let's set some time boxes. Maybe it's, maybe it's 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, but it's something where you take a step back and say, look, great idea, great try, it's not working. Maybe this is something we should either stop or double down on or something. But if we put that kind of structure and put those kind of cultural changes inside of an organization, then any company can be innovative. And that's how people responded to the COVID crisis. And they were finding different ways to apply digital to, to keep that company running. So really innovation became a way to drive resilience. To me, resilience is a reactive way of trying to make sure your company or your process or your organization can live to see another day. And that's what we saw for the last couple of years in the, in the age of COVID. And I agree, I'm not sure that COVID is actually over, but now it's time to talk about the next big uh, buzzword and that's sustainability. And that seems to be the next thing that everybody wants to talk about. But again, just like back in the day, digital transformation and digital business, people were having a very tough time understanding how, what, what uh, sustainability meant and how to apply it to their business. And so I decided to take that five step framework and expand it a little bit. Remember the five step, the, the five component framework for a digital business allows me to take ideas from digital and apply them and figure out how they make sense inside of my organization. No, 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 no business ever does all of these things, but they know how to prioritize and pick the right things and get the right people aligned. Well, the same thing can happen with sustainability. And sustainability, I'm just extending the model for three simple ideas. The first one would be environmental, right? All things about the understanding the raw materials and the impact that your organ, that your operations have on the environment the raw inputs that you come in, that your suppliers bring in, and how and what you do to the environment as it's going back out. The next one would be economic, and that's where you get into using sustainability techniques to understand the overall cost of operations and optimizing the cost of operations for your business. Um, this is usually where all the ESG conversations go about reporting requirements, uh, smart cities, things like that. And finally, community. 
you know, community is a really important piece of this sustainability conversation because remember what's at the center of this picture, the folks on your team, the people that work with your customers, et cetera. And you've got customers themselves that you're trying to market to, you know, sustainability is about growth. And how are you going to grow into new markets unless your customers can understand and see what you're doing and understand it's important to have a purpose driven organization. And that's, that's something that's coming up. And so that's where uh, those conversations go in that community thing. And so now when you see big long lists of, of all these different topics that are considered sustainability, now I can actually apply them to my framework and understand how they fit in my understanding of my organization. And a lot of companies will say, well, we're not interested in that. You know, we're not interested in clean water. Why? Because we're a water company. That's the definition of our business. Fine. Okay. Or, or um, you know, different aspects of this don't apply. Not everything has to apply. But the pieces of sustainability that apply to you, now you understand how to fit them in with all the other conversations. And if this list of 17 different uh, topics around sustainability looks familiar, yeah, it's the 17 sustainable the development goals. And now we can now we can leverage and understand what the United Nations is bringing to the conversation to put into context the things that we're trying to make happen in our own businesses. So sustainability, is it a buzzword? Yeah. But what it really translates to is forever is it's, it's more of a proactive way. If resilience is a reactive way to make sure that your organization lives to see tomorrow, Sustainability is a proactive way to make sure the value that you, you create in your organization will live forever. So that's how I think about sustainability and how it applies to business. And these are just five simple ideas that you can take from this presentation to, to uh, sort of bring back to your organization and start these conversations. First is find a really simple framework because everybody makes things too difficult. There are simple frameworks that you, use, can, that you can use to understand your business and how to apply these ideas. And change is gonna happen. You know it's gonna happen, but it's that combination of innovation and resilience that's gonna reduce the impact and let you live to another day. If innovation is tough, it can be engineered. Don't, don't give up on the idea that you can't introduce an, an innovation to your organization and actually make it work. And then finally, the last two key ideas, uh, resilience. Resilience is a reactive way to make sure your company, your organization can live to see tomorrow. And sustainability is a proactive way to make sure that your company can live forever.